Hello, my name is Harold Hafton, and welcome to Archaeological Minecraft. I'm a former archaeologist who enjoys playing Minecraft and thought it'd be fun to combine the two. In today's episode, we'll be talking about the Ethiopian rock-hewn churches at Lalibela, a UNESCO World Heritage Site located around 640 kilometers, or 400 miles, north of Addis Ababa, the capital of Ethiopia. These 11 rock-hewn churches from Lalibela make up what many think are the finest examples of the 200 total rock-hewn churches found in Ethiopia. When I say rock-hewn churches, that speaks to a very unique construction process employed on these churches. As you know, Normally, when someone builds a building, they lay a foundation, and then they build from that point going up from the ground, laying brick or stone or wooden posts, and then placing a roof on the top. This is the same in Minecraft as well as building in real life. Well, these churches weren't constructed that way. Instead, the churches were carved out of the rock itself, starting at the top where the roof was, and then progressing downward, carving out the walls, windows, and doors as they went. As such, as I replicate these in Minecraft, I am, as best as I can, trying to replicate this building technique and building by carving these out of the landscape. In Minecraft, you see I'm building this in a Badlands biome for two reasons. First is to match the color of the landscape with its shades of brown and reddish and orange soil, but also because Lalabella is located at the foothills of the mountainous northern areas of northern Ethiopia. It is located 2,630 meters or 8,630 feet above sea level at the base of Mount Abuna Yosef. As such, the Badlands biome terrain kind of matches that mountainous terrain. Also, the color of the coarse dirt and trees also match the colors in the Badland tree biome. In real life, both basalt and tuff are formed during volcanic eruptions. And if you recall from one of my previous videos, tuff has a cool trait where when you first carve into it, it tends to be a fairly soft stone, thus making it relatively easy to excavate or carve into. But over time, as the tuff is exposed to air, it hardens. Seeing as how we have both tuff and basalt in Minecraft as block types, I thought about trying to use those blocks to replicate the structure but ultimately decided against it because both of those blocks are gray in color, whereas the structure in real life are brownish, reddish, orangish in color. And so instead of using those blocks, I'm using red sandstone. I've even seen one account where the landscape is described as being pinkish tough, but to my eye, all the pictures I've seen show it to be a more brownish, reddish, orangey color, not pinkish, but maybe that's just how I see color. That also affords me the ability to leverage that block type to make stairs, slabs, and wall blocks to allow for a little more detailed build. Regarding the history of the site, the general consensus is that the site was largely constructed around AD 1200, perhaps over four to five different phases, and some have suggested that the site or parts of the site may date hundreds of years earlier and were constructed perhaps as early as the 7th century AD. Others point to the likelihood that the parts of the site that may have been older were repurposed and incorporated into later phases. Regardless, most can agree that the majority of the site was built and ascribed to the reign of King Gebre Meskel Lelabella, which lasted from AD 1181 to 1221, who was the last king of the Zagwe dynasty. At the time, the settlement of Lelabella was known as Rohe. I also find it fun that tradition also ascribes King Lelabella himself to be the creator, who, the legend holds, spent 25 years of his reign carving the churches out with the assistance of angels. As like most legends, there are likely kernels of truth in the telling, and I'm sure that the king took an active interest in the construction, or what construction occurred during his reign, but I very much suspect that the angels in this case are very likely quite a few of his workers, laborers, and architects. Still though, you have to admit it's a pretty cool story. The country and people of Ethiopia converted to Christianity quite early. In fact, that occurred around AD 300, and it was one of the first nations to adopt Christianity with some historical roots dating way back to the very start of Christianity with some connections to the apostles. Interestingly, the Ethiopian Orthodox Church and its biblical canon was largely forgotten about in the West and other Christian traditions, but 
that canon contains numerous ancient biblical books in its Bible that, while popular and well-known in the time of early Christianity, fell out of favor with other Orthodox or Catholic traditions, and thus they are no longer found in those Christian traditions, and they were later considered unorthodox, but they continued to live on in the Ethiopian Orthodox Church. All in all, there are some 20 books in the Ethiopian Bible that are not represented by other traditions, such as the Book of Enoch or Jubilee. And what is more interesting is that some of those books, while unknown in the other traditions, have been found in the Dead Sea Scrolls, which speaks to their ancient tradition and that they weren't books later added or created into the Ethiopian Orthodox Biblical Canon, but rather were just maintained there. Tradition holds that King Lelabella visited and spent time in Jerusalem and the Holy Land in his youth, and his church complex was built to create a Jerusalem in his capital after the fall of Jerusalem to the Muslims in 1187. In fact, not only do the church names point to places and landmarks around Jerusalem, but He renamed the geographic features as well. So, for example, I mentioned before that the mountain the site is next to is called Mount Abuna Yusuf, which means the mountain of Father Joseph. And the river that runs through the site is called the River Jordanos. In other words, the Jordan River. There are two main groupings of churches on the site five of which are on the north side of the River Jordan, and five to the south and east of the river, which runs southwest to northeast. On the upper side of the river, to the south of the northern grouping of churches and to the west of the southern grouping of churches is the church I'm focusing on in this recreation, and that is Bete Georges, or the House of St. George. St. George is the patron saint of Ethiopia, and is the structure on the site that's the most iconic of the rock-hewn churches. The total area of the excavated tuff in that church was 25 meters by 25 meters, or 82 feet by 82 feet, in a roughly square shape, though it's kind of trapezoidal on the one side, and is roughly 14 meters, or around 46 feet deep. The Church of St. George stands on top of a platform that is in the shape of a square cross and is about 12 meters long by 12 meters wide and then 12 meters high, or around 40 feet on each of the dimensions. Outside of the church is a small baptismal area carved into the stone where, as you may have guessed by its name, adherents to the faith could be baptized. There are also small niches and alcoves carved into the side of the outer walls for burials and for priests to sleep, as well as for openings to passages. On the interior of the churches, the stone floors are often covered with carpets and the walls decorated with geometric carvings and patterns, as well as pictures and tapestries. I couldn't replicate them exactly in Minecraft, but I did decorate the inside with some banners, carpets, and pictures on the wall. Because all of these churches were carved into the rock, they're technically all below ground, and thus the different parts of the church complexes are interconnected using a system of trenches, passageways, and tunnels. There was also an extensive system of drainage ditches that helped drain away all the ground and rainwater so the site didn't flood. Some of the passages and trenches led to hermit caves so people could pray or worship in isolation, and others led to catacombs for the burial of the religious deceased. Other passages interconnected the main areas of the complex together so one could walk from one part of the complex to other parts without having to go up to ground level. At the time of the construction, some of the buildings that are now churches may have instead been royal residences or perhaps may have been a bakery, and one may have been a small prison. This seems to be the case for Bete Merconos, the house of Mark the Evangelist, Bete Lethem, the house of bread, and Bete Gabriel Raphael, the house of the angels Gabriel and Raphael. Bete Golgotha Michael was said to have contained the tomb of King Lelabella. Over time, after the reign of King Lelabella, the drainage ditches filled up or were damaged in earthquakes, and which has in turn led to water damage. Several structures are at risk of collapse, and in the last 30 years, there's been quite a bit of damage and degradation to the paintings inside the churches, as well as additional damage to some of the reliefs and decorative carvings to such an extent that some are hardly even recognizable. 
There have been some efforts to stabilize and protect the sites, and in some parts of the complex, shelters have been placed over the church structures. However, there are some who point to problems with these stabilization and protection efforts in both how they were implemented as well as the process behind how they were implemented, and that they didn't seem to involve local or in some cases expert advice, so some of these might have been counterproductive and may be causing more damage to the site. In my mind, it speaks to how care must be taken when people with good hearts try and help, but sometimes that help has the potential to be unhelpful. Not saying that that's what happened here, and frankly, I have no insider knowledge, but I did link a report to the UN regarding the conservation efforts in the description below, so you can read it and investigate yourself if you choose to. Well, that wraps up this video. I hope that you like my recreation of the church or house of St. George and my video of the Ethiopian rock-hewn churches at Leila Bella. I think it turned out to be a pretty unique Minecraft build, but I'm interested in your opinion. Let me know in the comments if you want me to do a video at some point where I recreate all of the 11 churches and the whole complex. I put a number of links to various articles and online resources I made use of when researching and creating this video. I want to especially draw your attention to the website where there's a pretty neat 3D rendering of the House of St. George as well as several other of the 11 rock churches. Thanks, have a good rest of your day, bye for now.